What's going on everybody, my name is Rico, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my channel is about vlogs, series and tutorials. And in this episode, I'm going to show you guys the 10 basic steps in GIMP. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start a new project. So we're going to file, new, and then this prompt image shows. You can use a template like an A4 or something like a full HD. We're not going to do that right now. You can change the width by using these arrows and clicking on them, or you can just fill it in manually with your uh, numpad, so 1080. And you can go to advanced options. These are the pixels or the DPI. You can change the color space from RGB color to grayscale. You can change the position from 8-bit, 16-bit to 32-bit. What that means is if you've got a higher bit, you can push the image way further while editing it. So I'm going to keep it on 8-bit for this tutorial. You can change the gamma to linear light or perceptual gamma. I'm going to keep the color profile to built-in RGB. You can change it to any one you have saved on your disk. And now the final two options are fill with and comment. Fill width is standard set on background. You can change it to foreground color, white, transparency and pattern. I usually use transparency, but for this tutorial, I'm going to use background color. The background color can be seen over here. This is the background color. This is the foreground color. And you can add a comment. The standard comment is created by GIMP, but you can change it to anything you like. For this tutorial, I'm going to keep it empty and then hit OK. And as you can see, this is your canvas and this is the project that you've just started. The second thing that I'm going to show you guys is how to open up an image. So for that, you go to file, you go to open, and then you're going to find the file that you want to open. So for me, it's this one, click open. And then it says this image contains EXIF orientation metadata. Would you like to rotate the image? So rotate or keep original, I'm going to rotate it. And there you have it. Now we've just opened up this image. It's an image of Lisa and one of her teammates while she was at a soccer match. So now we've just opened up this image. If you want to open up the image as a layer, there are two ways to do this. The first way is to just click this, drag it to here, and then drag it over here. This is your layer panel. And you can add or duplicate layers. I'm going to show you guys later on. Let me place this on top of it and there you have it. Uh, obviously you don't see the entire image but that has to do with the scale that we're using right here. But just to show you guys how that works. So that's one way to add a layer. So let me delete that layer. Another option how to open up this image as layer is by going to file and then open as layers. And then click the image again, hit open, hit rotate. And there you have it. Now the image has been opened up again as a layer, as you can see right here. And the last thing I want to show you guys is how to open up a recent project. You can do so by going to file, open recent, and then let's click this XCF file. And there you have it. This is the thumbnail of this video that I've already made. And this is how you can open up a project. And as you can see, it opened up a new tab, just like the image that you've just opened up. And here the image is set as a layer. So the next step that I want to do is I want to show you guys how to duplicate a layer. As you can see, these layers have been duplicated. So I'm going to use this image to show you guys. I'm going to click this symbol right here, which is create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. So let's just add it. And now you see a copy has been added. Reason being is because you've always got an original layer and then you've got an edited layer. So let's just say I want to uh, create something, let's say with white, a brush like this. And if I deselect this, now it's gone. Now I see the original layer. And if I activate it, now I see what I've done. So let me undo that by hitting Ctrl Z. And the next thing that I want to show you guys is how to add a layer without duplicating the layer. You can do so by clicking the symbol right here, create a new layer and add it to the image. So let's just click it. And now you've got a couple of options. You can change the layer name. You can give it a color tag. You can change the mode from normal to other stuff. 
I'll show you guys later on how that looks not in this tutorial but I'll make a video dedicated to this especially and and you could change the mode you can change it from normal to dissolve color erase light and only dark and only i'm not going into detail right now i'll create a different video about that i leave the blend space composite space and composite mode on auto you can change the opacity from 100 percent to less so if you put it on 50 percent then the layer beneath it will shine through it you can change the width the height uh, offset it and then you can change fill width you can change fill with background color or transparency usually i pick transparency because if you add something or are going to remove something then the layer beneath it will show up and if you use background color it doesn't but let me show you guys what happens if you use background color let's change the width to 90 20 by 1080 there we go okay there you go so this is what the layer looks like now watch what happens if i decrease the opacity a little bit to let's say 50 percent see it's a little bit darker but the layer beneath it shines through it and that's how you can add a new layer now let's go to step number four which is add text so for that i'm going to delete this layer first by hitting right mouse button and then click delete layer so for adding text what you need to do is you need to click this symbol right here which is the text tool and then you can change the font over here or you can change the font on the right side so i'm going to place it on gobot bolt uh, i'm going to keep the color white you can change it to any color that you like in the rgb color space and you can fill in html uh, notations as well if you've got them if you've got a specific color so i'm going to leave it on white i'm going to click inside the image and i'm going to fill it in soccer game i'm going to hit ctrl a to select everything and I can now change the font size over here. So let's make it 200, maybe 500. There you go. It's a little bit too much, so 450. And if you want to move it around, all you gotta do is hit this move tool and then you can move this around like so. Another thing that I want to show you guys, which is step number five, is how to center your text. So for that, what you need to do is you need to click this symbol, which is the alignment tool. And then just make sure that you select the layer that has the entire size of the image. Then click on the letters and you will know that you've successfully done so if you see these four points around the letters as you see right now. And then you can relative to active layer, first item image selection, active channel, active path. I always go for active layer. Why? Because I always select the layer beneath it or the first layer in the image. And then if you hit the symbol right here, align center of target and then align middle of target, the text is now perfectly centered throughout the entire image. So let's move on to step number six, which is how to scale an image. And for that, I'm going to delete this layer to make it more easy. And now what we need to do is we need to hit this tool, which is the scale tool on the left side click it click inside the image now there's two ways to do this the first way is by dragging this like so and if you just drag it as you can see the image gets distorted if you don't want the image to be distorted all you gotta do is hit shift and now gimp make sure that the image isn't distorted and that the aspect ratio stays the same there you go so let me scale that and now the image has been scaled let me undo that there we go another way to do this is by using the scale tool again but now filling in the words manually like so 1080 scale and now the image has been scaled and there's one more thing that you can do which is instead of just manually filling this in what you can do is you can link these two together which means that if you change this one the bottom one gets changed as well so i'm going to hit the cross to make sure that it doesn't affect the image there you go and that's how you scale an image step number seven is about cropping an image let's say i want to get rid of the top over here there's one way to do this which is the rectangle select tool and let me just place it over here like so or maybe a little bit like so yeah that looks fine now let me hit enter to make sure that it's definitive and you can tell by the moving ans now what we can do is we can go to edit copy and then edit paste as new layer now a new layer has been added to the image there you go 
So I deselected these two by clicking this eye symbol right here. And now this is what we've just pasted. So let me activate these again. And there's another way how you can do this. So let me show you how I'm going to delete this layer. I'm going to pick the rectangle selection tool again. And I'm going to make a new selection just a bit higher like so. I'm going to hit enter. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select invert. And now I'm going to hit delete. And now everything around the image has been deleted. And now what we need to do is we need to go to select none. And now what I want to do is I want to go to image and then crop to content. And there you have it. Now the image has been cropped to the selection that you've just made. Now let's say you're done with your image and you want to save your project. You need to go to file and then save as and you can give it a name and this is the project file extension so it's an xcf file i'm going to keep the name as is hit save and then it will be saved yeah. and step nine is about exporting your image so let's go to file export as it's now set to jpeg standard is png but you can also change a file type or choose a file type extension over here so just pick anyone in the list down below I'm going to close it down jpeg let me make it a png for now and let's just hit export now you've got an option menu usually i leave everything the same and then hit export and with the jpeg let me show you guys what happens so i'll make it a jpeg and let me add a number over here so minus one there you go hit export and now the quality is set to 98%. You can drag it to the right or to the left. So I'm going to place it on 100. You've got a couple of advanced options. I won't go into detail right now, but you can choose anything you like. Usually I just leave everything as is and then hit export. And now your image will be exported. And that's it. The final thing that I want to show you guys, which is step number 10, is how to enter your preferences menu. So you need to go to edit preferences and that's where you can change all your preferences so once again let me close it down and show you guys because i did it very quickly edit preferences and there you go if you want to change how the theme looks you can go to interface and theme i've got it set to dark but watch what happens if i place it on light everything becomes a lot more bright and light obviously you can do the same thing for the icons so i've put them on color uh, for the sake of this tutorial and so that you guys can actually see what i do but you can place it on symbolic as well if you want to or legacy and this is how it looks if you place it on symbolic let me place it back to color let me place the theme back to dark there we go hit cancel and that's it those were 10 basic steps in gimp and that's it i hope you guys liked it let me know in the comment section down below i would love to hear your thoughts and I guess there's just one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit that bell button to be the first to be notified when I drop in a video. And until next time, doei!